Today I'm talking about master cylinders and these master cylinders are for 79 to 04 Mustangs. Pretty much if you've got a 79 to 04 then you can bolt on pretty much any master cylinder from any of those cars and they will physically bolt on. The only really odd case that will not bolt on to your particular booster is the 4.6 uh, V8 cars which started in 96 all the way up to 04 those mass cylinders are not going to bolt on because they're hydro boost now what I'm really talking about today is you've got a Fox car either it's an 87 to 93 that has a mass cylinder like this or you have a 79 to 86 which has a mass cylinder like this and you're converting over to let's say larger brake calipers like the ones in the back maybe you're doing five lug maybe you're doing disc brakes Anyway, you're doing some type of conversion and you need to pick a master cylinder that has a larger bore and a bore that will work for your application. First, let's talk about what you've probably got. And we'll start with the 87 to 93 master cylinder. That's this particular one. The 87 to 93 master cylinder, like pretty much any of the master cylinders after that, are going to have a plastic reservoir, it's going to have the low fluid sensor, and it's going to have metric threads with a bubble flare. Now you can look inside this particular port and you can kind of tell, I'm going to angle it a little bit, that you can tell that it has a concave kind of dished out at the very bottom where the actual brake line seals. I'm going to show you a metric bubble flare in case you've never seen one and you can see what that looks like. This is a metric bubble flare. Uh, the threads here are metric and then you look at the brake line I'm pushing up and you can see how the brake line kind of bubbles up that's a bubble flare. This particular one uh, type of threads and type of flare are going to work in any master cylinder Mustang wise starting in 1987. Now there are different size of threads. I'm just saying metric in general, not talking about specific size. To contrast that, we've got this one. I'm going to zoom in on this. This is a standard flare nut, so the actual nut here is standard threads, and then you can see the, the, the brake line here, it has, it looks like the end of a trumpet. That is a 45 degree inverted flare. This is the one most commonly used in custom applications, plus it is also used in the older cars. But in Mustangs would be from 79 all the way up to 86 would use this particular, this particular, particular type of flare at the master cylinder. Now, you may use this flare on a later model car at another part of the hydraulic system. So just because uh, your master cylinder uses metric threads and a bubble flare doesn't mean your whole system uses metric threads and bubble flare. Now let's go back to the 87 to 93. So now we know that it, that it uses the, the low fluid sensor, plastic reservoir, aluminum housing, metric threads, with the bubble flare, but also this one, unlike any of the other ones I have or any of the other ones I'm going to talk about, have this oddball port at the bottom. This particular port goes to the front left brake line only and does not go through the combination valve. The two other ports, this one going to the front right brake, does go to the combination valve, and this port, which goes to the rear brakes, it's then split at the axle. Um, does also go through the combination valve. So these two ports go through the combination valve, this one does not. This is, goes directly to your front left. Now the main problem with converting the master cylinders is not bolting them up to the actual booster. They, any of these master cylinders will bolt up. The problem is what threads do you have, what flare do you have, and how many ports do you have? And the whole reason for changing it is you want to change because this bore is probably too small. This particular bore is 21 millimeter, which is about 13 sixteenths. Now let's look at the next mass cylinder. If you've got a 79 to 86 car, you've probably got a mass cylinder that looks a lot like this one. This is not off one of those cars. This is actually off an 85 Lincoln Town car. It uses a one inch bore. So this is a larger than your 79 to 86 car. It uses a one inch bore, but it still has those standard ports. If we look in, you can kind of see a cone for that tapered uh, brake line to fit on, and again, the standard threads. So this would look very similar to your 79 to 86. This one's particularly a Lincoln Town car, which is one inch. 
Let's look at the next one. The next one on, to the right is a 94 to 95 V6 or GT. They're the exact same. It's very similar to the Fox uh, 87 to 93, except notice that it does not have that third port. That means this particular port on those cars, the 94 to 95 GT and V6, is run into the combination valve, both fronts, and this port, which is going to go to the rear brakes, is also run through the combination valve. This particular bore size, which is a really common master cylinder for brake upgrades, is one and a sixteenth. Now, if you actually take out the piston and actually measure the inside bore, you'll find out that it's actually only one and fifty thousandths, um, where one and a sixteenth would be one and a hundred and twenty-five thousandths. So it's not actually one and one sixteenth, which is what a lot of the literature says. It's really only one and fifty thousandths. And I have confirmed that on two master cylinders, both being Ford master cylinders. So I'm going to always refer to this one as the, an inch and a sixteenth, but note it is slightly undersized that if you actually measure it. The last one that I have represented today is the heaviest one, it's the oldest one, and it's the biggest one. This one has a very large reservoir, it's a very heavy master cylinder, it's cast iron, although you may be able to get it in aluminum. You can look in here and you can see that it uses uh, inverted flare, it also uses standard threads. This is off an 84 to 86 SVO. The bore size is 1 and 1 eighth. It's the largest bore size, it's going to move a lot of fluid. The reason Ford used this on those SVOs is because they had very large calipers. They had 73 millimeter pistons on their calipers and they also had the rear disc brakes. So that's a very oddball master cylinder. Uh, you're more than likely for your conversion you're not going to use that, but some people may. Now if we look at these we can see, well, these two look the same and these two look the same. If I've got an older car, do I have to use one of these older master cylinders? No, you do not. You can use any of these master cylinders on any Mustang 79 to 04, excluding those later model 4.6 cars. The advantages and disadvantages is the bore size and do you care about that particular sensor right there? Do you care about that low fluid sensor if you've got an 87 or later car? So, for brake upgrades, more than likely you're moving to some larger calipers. You can see my PBR calipers in the background there. Uh, you're moving to some larger calipers. You need to push more fluid to get the correct pedal feel and the correct hydraulics. So you need to move up in master cylinder size. This 21 millimeter or you've got a 79 to 86. I'm not exactly sure what that bore is, but you don't, that's not, not big enough, not going to push enough fluid. It's not going to work for you. So you're going to be moving up to a master cylinder like these. If you need a one inch bore, you pretty much have two choices. One, go with this Lincoln Town Car. Again, this is an 85 Lincoln Town Car, one inch bore, two ports, or you can go with the 93 Cobra. Now, I don't have a 93 Cobra here today, but it looks almost identical to this 94, 95 GT V6 master cylinder, except it has a one inch bore. So if you're looking for one inch bore, that's the master cylinder to get, or 93 Cobra. Inch and a sixteenth, Go with the 94-95 GT or V6 master cylinder. These are extremely cheap. You can get them used, rebuilt, brand new, however you want them. You can get one no problem. This one's out of a junkyard. You can even see the little blue marks on the side. That's a used one out of a junkyard. And if you want bigger than that, time for the SVO. That's the big boy. So you're probably not going to be using that one. Probably your calipers are not going to need to push that much fluid, uh, but there definitely are applications where that can be used. Now, there is another master cylinder. I don't have it here today, but it looks, again, very similar to this 9495. It's the 94 to 95 Cobra. Now, I already said the 93 Cobra uses a 1 inch bore, and this one uses a 1 and 1 16th bore. The, not, the 94 to 95 Cobra has 1 excuse me, 15 sixteenths bore. So it has a smaller bore. The 94-95 Cobra has a 15 sixteenths bore. Wow, that's a lot of different master cylinders. So you've got a lot of choice here. Um, why, again, why are you changing master cylinders? You're more than likely, you're changing brakes, you want bigger brakes, you're gonna need a bigger master cylinder. 
what master cylinder is right for you? Well, I can't really say because I don't know what rear brakes you're running. Um, if you're going to be running these PBR brakes, like a 99 to 04 PBR brake, it really is not just the brake on the front you're running, what's the brake on the back you're running? Also, how do you like the pedal feel? If you like a real stiff pedal, a pedal that's really got a firm push to it, then you're probably going to want a larger bore. If you want more uh, an easier push, less fluid, then you want a little smaller bore, maybe the one inch or maybe even the 15 sixteenths. So I can't say that there's one master cylinder that you need to go to. So in later videos, I'm going to give some recommendations of what master cylinders I would put with certain combinations. But as of right now, we're just looking at the bore size.